later, Mouse Proud. Leslie Felprin on Lee Evans' new hit comedy, Mouse Hunt, and the rest of the week's new films. But first, an eavesdrop explodes. The composer making radical music out of sounds captured from telecom scanners. To most people, the polluted air of South London has little to commend it, but one musician has found a way to make a living out of it. The skies over Battersea carry the radio signals grabbed by Robin Rambo, the composer who uses telecom scanners as musical instruments. I use a device called a scanner, this very machine here, which is where I inspirationally took my name from, and it's essentially a long-range radio receiver, nothing more sophisticated, and just scans the airwaves, like an FM radio or AM radio at home. It's always the thrill. <laughs> No one ever answers the phone. Hello? Oh. Who's me? Who's me? Where are you? The machines themselves are devised to pick up everything from, at the bottom of the scale, microwave ovens, the police, underground trains, buses. At the very top of the scale, around 1,000 FM, you pick up Earth to satellite transmissions, which means you hear astronauts talking to one another. really interests me sometimes is when people are on the telephone and they're obviously like in somewhere like in a cafe now or somewhere and we're hearing the record that's playing in the background or in like a takeaway you can still hear their phone ring and you hear Beep. and that's their telephone dialing so they're in the space waiting for someone to answer the phone and they're kick, 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 as as they switch off their little system and it breaks out the network the sounds I'm most interested in really are the, are the most banal, the most trivial, the kind of debris you'd never otherwise use when I make recordings. I often use the sounds that other people wouldn't use, the mistakes. This is a stupid uh, sample actually of a man saying... It's brutal and inexcusable. And you keep it looping. It's brutal and brutal and brutal and brutal. And you keep taking it down. It's brutal. And you reverse it. It's, it's interesting just taking the sound away from its original form. So here you can still recognize it's a voice, but you can take it even lower and just have... to have this very gentle pulse. Which is really quite hypnotic. Heidi, it doesn't matter what you do as long as you tell me, Heidi. I don't want to have to find out, I don't want to catch this, I don't want to catch that. I don't want to have to do Heidi, Heidi, it happened to me. So Heidi, I don't want to be hurt. Well, I, I, I would argue in a sense that is there such a thing as privacy anymore when video cameras survey our every movement on the street, when you use a credit card and every transaction is printed out on a sheet of paper, when the bank can check your every move, when you use the London Underground system, your ticket maps your every route across London. Your every last detail is mapped out on a computer system somewhere. Much of Scanner's work has been collaborative. Most recently, he worked with leading stage actress Harriet Walter on a recording of a play by Jean Cocteau. I don't know. I don't I don't look at myself in the mirror. I don't even put on the light in the dressing room. I promise. Yesterday I found myself face to face with an old woman. The Conto Project was interesting because it was a play based on a woman on the telephone, which is fairly a straightforward analogy to make between my work and a written work. But my job was, was really to give it a new context, to take a conversation, a one-sided conversation with a woman on the telephone like this, talking to her partner somewhere away who knows where, and that the game you play with this text is to work out what in fact is going on. Is he telling the truth? Is she telling the truth? Not surprisingly, Scanner has been quick to exploit the potential of enhanced CD technology. That's all right, I'm not being interested in reality because I don't believe it exists. His latest CD is a tribute based on recorded conversations with his late friend, the film director Derek Jarman. The idea of the, the CD was in some way to present sound polaroids of his voice, so I would visit all the places where he once lived or would have walked around, like in Charing Cross Road in London, Dungeness, where he spent the last you know, years of his life. And I took sound recordings of his own voice I'd made over the years and threw them into these compositions. I tried my best to, to produce this kind of very melancholic, very personal portrait of a figure that I miss a lot personally.
I was invited uh, by a Dutch organization to go to Amsterdam and work on a piece using Stockhausen sounds, but reconstructing them, making a new composition from using his sounds only. And the idea was, in some sense, to, to, mar, uh, to, to marry sorry, the two sides, this kind of traditional electronic composition, avant-garde traditional electronic composition, and what's, what's deemed as like the new kind of pop music, drum and bass, jungle music, whatever you call it. <laughs> found that the ideas I was working with were quite inspiring. He felt I was too repetitive, but he said I should be more like an apple on the moon. That's Stockhausen for you. <laughs> Scanner performs frequently on the international underground club scene and makes regular appearances at the ICA's electronic lounge. Philip Glass was a composer, along with Steve Reich, the other American composer, that really inspired me a lot working with very simple systems music taking a very, very simple melody and just slowly changing it over a period of time, be it five minutes, be it 20 minutes, be it two hours. Bands like the Velvet Underground were taking those kind of ideas as well. And electronic music was taking those kind of ideas with bands like Tangerine Dream and the sort of 1970s electronic music. And it's evolved today back into the 90s, or forward into the 90s, I should say, with a form of music that takes the ideas of Steve Reich, Philip Glass, the whole school of minimalism, late 60s, early 70s, and throws it back into dance music. And what dance music essentially now is a form of minimalism. We have a, a bass drum, a little hi-hat, and a tiny little melody. It's enough to get people dancing. When I do live performances, when I do recordings, they're very much what I would entitle sound polaroids. They take an environment, a space in real time, and throw it back over a speaker system, if it's in a concert, onto a CD and capture that very moment in time. So far, his most ambitious sound Polaroid has been last year's Meltdown performance, featuring a dramatic stage appearance by Laurie Anderson and 100 violinists. It's a virus. I work in a lot of collaborative work, so it really gives me the chance to work with other people. And if it's successful, then we carry on working, but it's not like a band. I never have musical differences. I may be a bit schizophrenic, but I never have to split up with myself, so... It does get a bit lonely, of course, but I always have my scanner I can talk to. <laughs> now, Divines and Comedies. Scorsese's biopic of the Dalai Lama and Lee Evans...